Hey, g'day. Welcome to Farming Life Australia. Today's video is about us planning up the garden and why we think this year more than ever is an important year to plant a garden. And I'll go through the reasons why I think this year is important to plant a garden and give my opinions and explanation on the world situation regarding upcoming food shortages. By now you've probably seen or heard where the forecast is for world food shortages. Uh, today I'm going to just talk on why I think this is going to become a reality. I'm going to try to make some sort of sense of the whole situation and just give you my take on the whole thing. As I see it, there's three main problems for farming that's coming up. One is obviously the price of fuel that keeps going up and up. The other thing is that fertiliser is getting dearer and dearer or not available. And number three is that the supply chain worldwide is breaking down. In other words, we won't be able to get parts or new things, etc. from overseas very easily. Let's talk about the fuel price first. It's really pretty self-explanatory. Everything you do on a farm relies on some sort of fuel based on oil to move. And as that price goes up, for farmers to stay in business, they have to increase the price of their produce. Unfortunately, this is combined with a few other factors and made it in some areas almost impossible to plant a crop. Fa big mechanised farming supplies most of the world's food needs. And when I say big mechanised farming, I mean the guys who plant thousands of acres of vegetables, wheat, corn, all those sort of commodities are produced en masse by large farming operations who rely heavily on fuel. The other problem with the fuel price is that most of the produce gets produced in the country away from where the mass of people are and gets transported to sell where there is a mass of people in the cities. And somehow that fuel has to be paid for to get the actual produce from the farm to in the city where the bulk of people are. And likewise the people have even got to use fuel to get from their home to the shop to get it and take it home again. You can say, oh no, no, not me, I use public transport. Well it doesn't matter if you go on a bus or a train or how you get there, somehow the fuel that runs that machine has to be paid for. The next really big issue is fertiliser. The world in 1960 used 10 million tonne of nitrogen based fertiliser worldwide, roughly. In 2021, the world used 117 million tonnes of nitrogen based fertiliser to produce the food that you and I buy at the supermarket. Recently, because of worldwide issues, the price of that fertiliser has more than doubled and in a lot of cases just not available. One of the biggest problems for Australia in particular is that we import pretty well most of our nitrogen based fertiliser, inorganic fertiliser that is, and a lot of it comes from Russia and Ukraine and at the moment we have embargoes on Russia so we can't get anything out of there. We also imported a lot out of China but because of Australia's relationship with China at the moment they don't want to supply us even if we could afford to buy it. Interestingly a lot of the fertiliser that's produced worldwide and exported is produced in countries under the Soviet bloc or I don't know what they actually call those countries now but they produce a lot. Countries like Lithuania, etc., produce a hell of a lot of fertiliser and export it. And whether we're able to access that fertiliser at the moment, I don't know. I'm not sure how far the embargo goes. I know some people are going to think, oh, well, just use organic fertiliser. Organic fertiliser could not feed the world. We're just not set up to make organic fertiliser. And even the machinery farmers use in general isn't suitable to spread organic fertilizers. 
The next problem we've got worldwide, of course, is a supply chain problem. And if you've been watching the news, you've probably realised that a lot of the containers in the world are stuck in China and their ships anchored up there waiting for months to try and get a cargo to take somewhere because their ports have come to a standstill due to COVID, etc. And you hear stories about stuff sitting on wharves and rotting in containers and it's just one big disaster. One of the ways that these supply chain problems is affecting farmers is that if they get a machine that breaks, often they can't get a part to fix the machine. And if it happens to be a linchpin part that they need, like a part for their tractor that they use to harvest or plant or something like that, well then obviously the whole operation grinds to a halt. I've talked about all the negatives and the bad side of everything. For Australia, there are some positives. Number one, our arable land compared to our population is quite large. We have a large area of land that can be cultivated for a relatively small population and that's a big advantage for us. The other thing is that we do have natural resources in Australia that a lot of countries don't have like metals, minerals etc. And although we are not taking them to the end thing and manufacturing at the moment, if the need arose we possibly could. One thing that could make a big difference in this upcoming shortage is if farmers were allowed to sell a lot of their stuff direct to the public. You know, we've got all sort of impediments on selling produce to the public, other than fruit and vegetables, like eggs. You know, you've got an egg board and eggs have got to be sold through the egg board. I can understand in the case of meat where there's diseases, etc., involved, but generally I think they need to make it easier for farmers to sell direct to the public. There's probably a lot of things we can do in Australia and the country that aren't possible in the cities. You know, I mean, the logistics of farmers going to a market in the city is probably pretty difficult. And supplying that amount of people will take modern farming methods and modern fertilisers, etc. This whole explanation of how I see the thing is just a simplified version. I mean, you can go on and on for days about it because it is quite a complex situation and obviously it's changing all the time. One thing you could do about it is really get in and grow a garden and do anything you can to make relationships with people who can supply you with food if things get tight. The sources that I quoted in this video are from the internet and I've done my best to check if they're accurate. If you know of a different set of circumstances or something else that I've missed, please put it in the comment section. Thanks a lot for watching this edition of Farming Live Australia. See you next time.